Greetings, comrades. Feel most welcome. Uh, and uh, to all those who are present here, thank you for joining us. Those will be joining us via either watching our reviews or our video recordings, we do appreciate your presence, your persistence, and your consistency in trying to also get the information we share here. And we ask you to share any feedback with us via all the channels available. And if you check us on YouTube, kindly on the comment section. If you have any comment you want to share with us, feel free to share with us. We are going on with our reading of our philosophical and ideological class, and we are reading the book Conscience. Uh, so before, uh, without wasting my time, permit me to uh, read the previous paragraph, and then I'll ask Sister Myra, Samara, if you're able, to read for us the paragraphs, the related paragraphs which form part of our discussion today. But I'll be reading the previous paragraph just to bring a recap a bit on what we read in our last class, and then we connect to the reading for today. So in the previous paragraph is that the point which I'm interested to make is not merely that the earliest philosophies carried implication <clears throat> of a political and social nature, and so were warmly connected with the actualities of life. I am suggesting that these philosophies were reflections of social terrors, that they arose, they arose from social exigencies. Thus, earliest philosophy needed if it were to destroy alleged, allegedly heaven-sanctioned aristocratic society to assert the irrelevance of Pantheon, or Pantheon on, and this he did in his attempt to bring all explanations of nature within the ambit of nature itself. A revolutionary, as opposed to a reformist accumulation of clerical of clerical influence called not for an amelioration here and there of social inequalities, the smoothing of this sharp corner and thinning of that eminence, but for a total rejection of the idea of social inequality. That in metaphysics, which implies this rejection of social inequality is precisely that which is common to all monists. Those who assert the unity of nature and of different and of different uh, kinds of things as only different manifestations of the same thing. That was the last paragraph of our reading in the previous class. Mr. can you read for us the later paragraph? Welcome, Brother Kami. It was this idea of the unity of nature, as well as that of basic equality and justice, which required that Talas should generalize those rules with thumb, picked up in the marshes of the Nile Delta. Rules of thumb allow for a certain measure of arbitrariness and partiality in application. The rules which the Egyptian Arthur Donuts used in marking out thumbs were bound to lead to injustices, for they were measured with knotted pieces of cord. Palaces, egalitarian perceptions necessary for a mercantile economy led him to seek general forms of rules. When rules become general, they guarantee an objective impartiality, and impartiality is the outward mark of egalitarianism. Thank you. Let's leave it there at first. Brother Kony, uh, uh, welcome. Do you have any remarks? We soon you certain? Yeah, yes, Brother Pigeon. Thank you for welcoming me. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, please proceed. I shall. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Let's thank you. No, no. That's the reading, the first paragraph of our reading, reading, reading today, and I think it's the continuation of the previous paragraph. So, let's try to share our thinking as we used to do, as our normal routine. You've you've heard or read the paragraph. You've seen it. 
So let's check if we can connect Sister Sister Ida. Hmm. Sorry. Um. I think that uh, Athinas wanted to make things um, bring out a generalized principle of rules, how those rules should be applied, rather than see um, the people in the previous chapter who had their own, they seem to have, um, it said something about knotted, let me see where that was. Um, uh, It's uh or monotheists. So monotheists will be uh single, um single rules. I think he's he said something about it being knotted. Who's the host? Oh no, I hope not. Brother Christian, are you not there? Brother Kwame, are you not there? Who's dropped out? You're there. Oh, brother no, Kwame, sister, you don't seem to be able sister, to be host. Sister Ida. I'm here. Yes. If you want to make me host, that's fine. I'm not sure I can. I'm not sure how to do it. You are it, host right. now, so you can... You can oh, uh, right. Let me see how I can do that for so you. You then. do not have total control. On the other hand, you can proceed to, to, to chair the meeting. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not. I, I don't really want to chair it because I'm not sure how long I'm here for, to be honest. Share, no. Okay, in that case, click, click um, my name. Oh, right. Then, okay. And then click make me host. Uh, it looks like I can, I can only make you co host. Host, yes, make you host. Yes. Yes, so you're now host. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> right. Okay, so let me go back to trying to. Whilst you're doing that, I will uh, put a book on the screen. Ah, that's why. And give me a few seconds to do that. Thank you. No problem. So you proceed whilst I... Um, okay, for what, what I can book. remember of what was on the screen, it sounded like um, the people in power sort of made their own um, yardsticks of how their power went, and they weren't necessarily consistent. Um, uh, so they ruled by what they said rather than ruled by generalised um, ways of... Uh, generalized implied ways of rule is what I got out of out of the reading. Um, what else can I say? I think that's really what I got. Brother Joseph, did you get something different out of the reading? I didn't hear too much too well. I mean, I struggled to hear the reading. I rely more on hearing than reading because I have difficulty seeing, you know. But I okay. didn't quite get it. I didn't quite get everything. That, that hence I was going to ask for it to be read to me again so that I could make a contribution. Okay. Yes, I think when well, it comes back on the screen. It's, it's okay. on the screen. Can you see it on okay. the screen? Yeah, we can see it on the screen. But let me I'm, just start. I'm making, it, I'm making it larger. Uh -huh. Let me tell if it's too large. Tell me if it's too large, everyone. No, that's fine. Okay. It doesn't it make a difference. Go one more up. Yeah, that's it fine. That's good. That's good. It doesn't make a difference for me. I say it doesn't make a difference for me uh, okay. because I, I generally I can't read on on the screen easily. Mm -hmm. Okay. No well, problem. it's it's no, it's it's fine. It's fine. Sister Myra, what did you get out of it before we reread it again, please? Um, I'm just wondering whether he's trying to say that some of Thales's ideas were picked from Egyptian philosophy. Mm -hmm. As he said, uh, generalize the rules of thumb picked up in the marshes of the Nile Delta. So mm -hmm. was there a transference of, of, of philosophy? As we know, uh, Brother Kwame always says, all philosophy was African, but then it got uh, Europeanized. So I'm wondering, for me, that's what Jeff saw. I mean, well, is that what he's trying to say? Is that what Kwame Kwame is trying to say that some of these Thales's philosophical thoughts came from other places? 
sis mo kakustyo mm-hmm. din. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, let me reread the highlighted bits and then and then uh, we'll ask Brother Kwame or maybe somebody might want to jump in um, before. Um, it was this idea of the unity of nature as well as that of basic equality and justice which required that Thylus should generalize those rules of thumb picked up in the marshals of the Nile Delta. Rules of thumb allow for a certain measure of arbitrariness and practicality in application. The rules which the Egyptians Afro Aperdon Apes Apodonates used in marketing. Okay, used in uh, marking out farms were bound to lead to injustices, for they were measured with knotted pieces of cord. Okay, now that's a bit of. Okay, they were measured with knotted pieces of cord. Thylus egalitarian uh, perceptions necessary for a mercantile economy led him to seek general forms of rules. Um, When rules became general, they guarantee an objective impartiality. And it, oh, maybe that's the wrong impartiality. Uh, uh, they guarantee an objective impartiality, and impartiality is the outward mark of egalitarianism. So that's it read again. And now, now that I've I've reread it, I see where I I, I was trying to get the knotted pieces of cord. In other words, I think he was saying that those knotted pieces of cord could be changed. They weren't like uh, rulers that had had um, markings out. You know, people could slightly move the knots one way or other and and so could cheat. I think that is part of also what was being said. Um, Sister Myra, do you have any other thing to say about it? Um, Brother Kwame, yes. you seem to be doing all sorts of things on the screen. Aha, um, thank you. Just again, that the, the, uh, there's a word in the last section, sorry, in the mm-hmm. last sentence. Um, and partiality is the outward mark of egalitarianism. So is it, sometimes when we use the word outward, it, it can mean something is superficial, you know, she's outwardly uh, benevolent, but really she's not. So I'm wondering okay. whether that's the context in which the author also used this word. Is he trying to say that even though Talis, uh created these general rules that try to serve everyone, they are not really achieving impartiality or, or true um, egalitarianism. Mm. I would have put that for the um for the people who were first um doing the rules, but let's let's ask others who are with us. Let me see who else is with us. Brother Kwame, I know you're with us. Um brother Oh I know you by another name. Brother Coco, is it? Brother Coco, are you with us? Am I on mute? She's tired. That is not Brother Coco. That is Brother, Brother. Is it Brother Coco? Yeah, I'm looking at Brother. Maybe he can't speak. He can't speak where he is. Oh, okay. In that case, I'll I'll give, I'll give Brother Joseph one more chance to see if he has anything to say. And if not, we're coming back to you, Brother Kwame. I'm here. I'm here. Also. I think. I think. Uh, I think um, the passages in 
or is building on what came before in the sense that as ideas became more radical for Tyrus, he sought to, to, to insist or demonstrate that you don't have a one group of one group or one group of people and another group. For instance, some modern day uh, example, uh, for instance, in India, where you have different rules for marriage, for instance. And Modi was saying recently, you know, he was trying to say that the rules for marriage should be equal, I mean, should be unified, um, because it said it makes it too complicated. And I think the idea of when rules are generalized, it means everybody has to obey rather than some people could opt out and so on. And the idea of egalitarian, where there's no distinction between the genders or, or the person, like one man, one vote. Okay. In a sense, you know, I think that's where all that thing came from, you know, to the state we are in, or some level of the stages we are in, in, in modern society. Is that that struggle for whether the, the so one rules are apply for everybody, not one for the gentry and one for the the commoners or whatever, you know, oh, okay. as happened in along the line. So this is what I understand. This is why I gather from this. Okay, brother, key, uh, brother yeah, Pigeon, it, I, I, see, I see you're back. Yeah, the key yes. word there for me, the key word there is impartiality and egalitarian. Okay, okay. Okay, um, brother Pigeon, I'm going to ask brother Kwame to explain one word and. Uh, and he can either talk or else we'll give you back the whole, I mean, the um, uh, being in charge of, of taking this through. Uh, Brother Kwame, could you explain, please, what A-R-P-E-D-O-N, uh, I think it's, Adoraf oh, I can't even pronounce the word anymore. Egyptians Ador Adonapite tights or something is Brother Kwame. Kwame, can I share my screen so that I can be able to look for the search of the words? Uh, there, there are two sorry, words. Sorry, I sorry, Brother Pigeon. <laughs> can I share my screen so that I can be able to do a, 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 a fine search of the definitions or you can just proceed? Yeah, you can, but give me a moment. I'm not in a position to do that at the moment. Yeah. Oh, are you not in a position to talk? I'm in a position to talk, but not to do what Pigeon's asking me. So give me a moment. Oh, to okay, do because there were two words beginning with A. Can, can you spell the word again? Is it upper? Go on, spell the word again. A R P E D O. N A P T S. Okay. And then the one just above it, beginning with A R B. Maybe you could tell us what those two words exactly mean, please. Uh, yeah, hold on. I want Arbitrariness, to... I think, just means. Yeah, I want to get the. Fairness, I think. Yeah, it's okay. So <clears throat> that that was why I wanted to. Um. That's why I, I wanted to, sorry, that's why you recall last week, I want us, I, 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 I let us look for some words first before we mm -hmm. continue, and that helped. Um, mm -hmm. So what a pigeon would have been able to, as he's indicated, been able to help us um, if his internet hadn't gone off. So um, not sure how the, the word is pronounced, um, Api, api so mm -hmm. these these um so these uh the, so what the these guys were responsible okay let me go back to the history so so that you understand what the word means yeah mm -hmm. so the the river nile uh floods every year okay um so the river nile as you know begins from part of it uh i think the white nile that part starts from Ethiopia, and then the is it the Blue Nile? I think then starts from uh, Burundi, Rwanda Burundi border. 
and then they meet up along the line and then they become the, the river Nile. So we have the blue and the white Nile, then they become the Nile as we know it in Egypt. And then it flows all the way into the Mediterranean. Now, every year it floods. And when it floods, uh, when, when, when it floods, it, um, it submerges the farms, yeah? The farms are submerged. Mm -hmm. uh, people's farms are submerged. And so, so when they are submerged, people basically can't trace the outlines of their farms. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. So, but when the Nile then subsides and leaves it, its rich silk, uh, silt, sorry, silt, and, and if you like, black soil, Mm -hmm. It leaves mm -hmm. a very fertile, uh, it leaves it very fertile. And so the ancient Egyptians, the Africans, then planted their crops and so on and so forth. The problem was that when it floods and the farms are lost under the water, when, they when the water subsides, farmers then have to retrace their boundaries, don't they? So you yeah, saw well, yeah. my boundary was there, although my boundary was there. So these guys are, are pino, are pin donaps. It's a Greek Greek word, by the way. Mm -hmm. They are responsible for marking out the farm under the pharaohs. Ah, uh, now that explains it. Okay, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the uh -huh. way the way they do is that they use knotted pieces of cord. Mm -hmm. That's how they use to measure out the land. Now you will all agree with, with me <laughs> that when you are going to reshare out land using knotted cord, how long is a piece of string? <laughs> Where do you start? How, <laughs> how long is a piece of string? How, how long is a feet? Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. you, you, you see what I mean? So yeah. there is room for the knotted pieces of cord to be either made shorter or longer, yeah. In other yeah. words, there's, there's room for for um for for injustices mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because the knotted pieces of cord could be tampered with. Yeah. Therefore, that explains it. Yeah. And therefore, yeah. those knotted pieces of cord can they be seen as not being uh, impartial? That it can, um, it can generate partiality on, the, on behalf of those doing the job. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and so, so what it means is that we are trying to measure something and the measurement we are using can be corrupted. So, so that, that is the meaning of the word. Does that make sense now? So yeah, yeah, all, yeah. There are those who measure out the land after the the, sub, sub, the subsidence or the subsiding of the river Nile, so that farmers can find their boundaries and plant their crops. Okay. So what is the other so, word? Oh, the other word I think was just um, arbitrariness. I think that just means yeah, so uh, fairness. Of, yeah. So this arbitrary, it means it's very subjective. Uh huh. So I, I feel that Sister Ida uh, is a woman, so she shouldn't chair our class. I beg your pardon? <laughs> well, that's an this example. Your arbitrary thinking, is it's it? An, yeah, it's an example of arbitrariness, to be ar okay. arbitrary. In other words, there is no objective grounds for what I am saying or what uh -huh. anybody is saying. Okay. It's based basically on subjectivity. And that's a problem with racism. That if someone is is a racist, but well, they may be unconscious bias, if you like, they are not conscious of their racism. They will be saying things or measuring things using unconscious bias of which they are not aware. Okay. Ah, uh, and so racism generates also arbitrariness. In other words, there is partiality in application. So you find that the fight. Because you are black, it's applied differently than if you are white, and vice versa. Arbitrariness. Okay. Does that help? Mm-hmm.
So I've just sought to explain the well, two. Yes. Explain yes. the rules of thumb. Sorry? Rules of thumb. Oh, rules, of, rules thumb. of thumb. Yeah, rules, a, rules, a rule of thumb is, is, a, is a rule that is basically used um, like, like um, let me give an example. Um, if, if we are going, going into investment, uh, we want to invest in a farm, for instance, and then we will say, okay, uh, we will only invest in a farm if the net return is positive. Yeah? So that, that, that is a rule. If the net return, by which I mean, we compare the costs and the benefits of that investment as the money we make and the money we spend, if the difference between the returns, that is the sales or the rewards, however you want to you look at it, if that is higher than our costs, then that is a good investment. Yeah? So that is what we call a rule of thumb. So going forward then. Uh, brother, would have... you mind would, would you mind if I just added another example? Yeah, if you just hold on, let, yeah, hold on, let me finish, then you can add an example. Sure. Okay. So, so, so if you, so going forward, our rule of thumb is anytime the net return is positive, let's go for the investment. If it's not, let's not go for an investment. So that is, that is a rule of thumb. Usually it doesn't require a lot of calculations. It's basically to some extent, it, there is some objectivity, but it's also to some extent subjective, but that is what a rule of thumb is. The thumb, that's your thumb, the thumb on your hand, your big finger, which is called the thumb, as a rule. So I'll put my thumb on the paper. If the paper is as long as my thumb, great. It goes through. If it's not, it doesn't go through. Thank you. So I hope that helps, Brother Pigeon. Yeah, Pigbin. Yes, it helps. Since I since I is the chair. <laughs> yes, brother. Oh, brother, oh, brother sorry, sorry. I didn't no, 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 no. I said after, well after Brother Kwame, I was well going done. to give you back the chair. No, 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 no. No, listen, Brother Pigeon asked a question. I was I was yes, answering yes, the yes. question. That's why I asked him if it was okay. Okay, uh -huh. yes. But Sida yes. is now chairing. Thank you. Oh dear, oh dear. Okay, I'm chairing for the next two minutes. Um Brother uh, DJ, Mr. P, um, please feel um, welcome to uh, uh, to tell us what you have to say. And after you, Brother Pigman, I'm handing back to you. Brother okay, Pigman. lovely, Ida. Th thank you so much. Thank just you. very quickly, I just wanted to add to what um, uh, Brother Kwame was saying. Um, an additional example, Pigman, when you say rule of thumb, it's just a, it's just a saying. It's really just a saying, yeah? So rule of thumb, for example, if you're baking, if you're a baker and you're baking, the rule of thumb is before you put the bread into the oven, you must first heat the oven. That's the rule of thumb. You cannot just put the, the, the bread or the dough you're about to bake into a cold oven or turn it on when you're putting it in. You've got to preheat the oven prior to you put in the dough or whatever the mixture inside the oven. And uh, th that is what they call a rule of thumb. So that 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 that's um, my understanding or interpretation of it. So I, I hope that helps, brother. Mm, uh, very nice one. Uh, Ida, yes. Let me start to where brother, brother, brother DJ P has. Um, oh, please do. Has, yeah. Let me add to uh, other examples of rule of thumb. So, um, so brother PJ, uh, brother DJ P has given the example of baking. So, because I like cake, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so, so uh, yeah. So, I want to, I want to uh, support that. So, mm -hmm. it's called the pound cake rule: equal parts of butter, sugar, eggs, and flour. That's a rule of thumb. Basic recipe oh, for wow. making a traditional pound cake is a, another. I'm very impressed. Part. You know that. Uh huh. You're learning then, so much about us, Ida. We got skills, then, us gentlemen. We got skills. Then there is <laughs> yes. there is another one called the Pareto principle. Which is called the 80-20 rule, which which um, says that um, if you have a hundred people, if you use, if you apply it to work, 80% will not do any work, 
only 20% will do it. Correct. That's another example. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's, a, there's a two minute rule that if it, if it takes uh, less than two minutes, do it immediately. That's a rule of thumb. <laughs> so those are all examples. Uh, in finance, there are, so there are um, uh, rules of thumb in different businesses. The one I gave was from finance. The one brother, the brother BJP gave is from baking. There are rules okay, of thumb. Okay, okay. Now, in, now I'm so impressed with you two that I'm going okay. to ask Brother Joseph to give us a rule of thumb. And then <laughs> Sister Myra, if you know, or, or even Sister Marlene, if you know a rule of thumb, please. So first of all, Brother Joseph, do you know a rule of thumb? I, I feel we're all being challenged here. Not that I can think of one, but... <laughs> Brother Joseph? Yeah, I'm trying to think, uh, but I think uh, uh, if you have nothing to say, then keep your mouth shut. Okay, okay. So then, uh, Sister Myra, are you keeping your mouth shut or do you have a rule of thumb? Um, the one I can think of is when you're cooking rice, um, they'll say use two cups of water to one cup of the rice generally, just you know, as a gauge. Yes, use one, yes. three cups of water. Two cups of water, two to of one, water, two to cups one of water of to okay. one rice. Okay, that makes sense. Sister Marlene. Yeah, that's a good one. I use two cups of water to to, yeah. to the rice, actually. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So neither of you are listening to your own rules. Okay, Sister Marley, <laughs> do you have a rule? No, uh, Brother Pigeon? No, uh, uh, um, I'm coming across this rule of thumb today, but it appears like it's the unwritten rule. So is it the Magna Carta of British? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't think so. And I can't really think of a quick rule of thumb. Um... Ooh, no, no. I think I, I'll, 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 I'll do it, Brother Joseph. If you've got nothing to say, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> well, here, here's another one. Here's another one. When you're driving, I remember when, when I was learning to drive. Um, rule of thumb, before you, 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 you change direction, mirror, signal, then you manoeuvre. That's the rule of thumb in driving. Correct? Oh, oh, okay. okay. It's a Thank you. It appears to be like, uh, I don't know why it was made to be a farm, but it appears to be just the legal rules that should be followed. I don't know who came, it's because that who came with those rules are, cannot be known or why it became a farm thing, but uh, okay. <laughs> it is impressive what you people are saying. Yeah. Uh, sister, sister Ida, thanks for, for helping us in this. It's actually, I, I was expecting you could, you could take over the session as you chat throughout the, the session, but we hope you will do that one day, soon enough. Uh, one day, but, but today I might have to leave you for a little while. Yeah. I'll try and come back, yeah. I'm afraid. But yeah. thank you, thank it's you been for, interesting. <laughs> thank you for stepping in. Permit me to also share my thinking before maybe I seek if other people have shared their thinking as well. So mine is starting with the idea of unity, of nature. And I've gone back to the previous paragraph where there's a sentence there saying that, uh, or, or, Okay, Brother Coco, come in, please, before I proceed. Um, sorry, what? people were sharing their, their rule of thumbs. That oh. They oh, yes, please share. Yeah. So I worked at the Center Bank uh, in my previous life, and uh, the IMF, you know, the same IMF that you know, uh, has a rule of thumb with regards to how, whether the the reserves, the foreign reserves that you have are adequate to to sort of support you. So what they do is they look at the your imports, what you import from above and abroad from outside your country. So all the goods and services that you, you buy from other countries, and they look at the money that you have in foreign currency, and they divide those imports by the money you have. So they say if you have three months of imports so three months of imports is that the money you have can cover uh, three months of imports that is even if you are you're, you're not you're no longer um, accumulating any foreign currency but at least you have enough to cover you for three months you should be able to find ways to um you know to survive as a country that's that's a rule of thumb that the imf uses with regards to imports and foreign exchange okay. 
Oh, okay, that's very interesting. I was coming across many things today. I think I've shared such text to Brother Kwame. I was meeting, there's this book called, I don't know, The Silent War, where they are talking about economy and why currency was created. And uh, they were producing adequate, and then they decided to produce less so that the demand can be high, and then the person who, pro who started the currency thing now can control the economy. Something like that I was reading. Anyway, thank you for such. Uh, as I was saying is that uh, I was trying to share my idea on the, my thinking on uh, the first, this paragraph, starting with the, it was the idea of unity of nature as well as that of basic equality and justice, which required that Thales should recognize those rules of thumb pick up in the marshes of Nile Delta. And I think, uh, first of all, from Nile Delta, Brother Komi was saying, Nile Delta come from Kenya, the source of river Nile is in Kenya, uh, and it's basically supported with one one forest called Mau Forest. Mau Forest is not Mau Mau. Somebody had been confused between Mau Mau and Mau Forest. Mau Forest is the biggest forest in some part of Rift Valley. And it's the source is the is where they have so many tributaries that take water to Lake Victoria, which was Lake Nyanza, now renamed Lake Victoria from when Victoria came to rename our lakes as if they never had names. So once the water gets from uh, uh, Mau Forest, it gets to Lake Victoria. And from Lake Victoria now, Nile pick it up as it takes it to 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 to, to Uganda, past Uganda to Sudan. That's the the all part of it. But I know <laughs> Sister Mira will have to object that point. Sister Mira, it's the source of, of the River Nile is in Kenya. Yes, because my colonial education they told me it was in Uganda. <laughs> no, 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 Uganda. Of course, the real source of River Nile is Lake Victoria, the so-called Lake Victoria, which is in Uganda, Tanzania, and Kenya. But the biggest point where Lake Victoria, the so-called Lake Victoria, gets water is from rivers in Kenya. So they judge the source of River Nile based from where the Victoria, which is the source of River Nile, gets its water from. And also the biggest percentage of Lake Victoria is in Kenya. So that's where they, they, they do always talk of the source of River Nile. Sometimes back when we wanted to do some activity in Mao Forest, the actual Egyptian countries and Sudan countries brought an issue to our government because by deforesting Mao Forest, it means we'll reduce the water that gets to Lake Victoria and then subsequently deny water to Sudan and, and, and Egypt. So they have always been conscious on how that Mao Forest is being handled. Even though it is the home of the aborigines, the Ogiek community, the Ogiek community who are the aborigine, majority of the aborigine in Kenya, still live in the forest, in that Mao Forest, and the government wanted to remove them by force. And there have been cases where they have been forcefully removed from the forest. And now William Root has given the uh, the, the right to uh, replant or reforestation of that Mao forest to a Dubai company. So the foreigners have been given rights to say that they want to plant more trees in Mao forest. But that's a story for another day. <laughs> now, I, I'm interested on the unity aspect of nature because I, I was reading the previous paragraph where Kwame uh, Thales is saying that uh, when he moved from Patheism, Sorry, previous... brother, Pigeon. brother Pigeon. Yes. Sorry, my apologies. Let me just uh, mention this because you you were on it. Sorry, I, I didn't come in quick enough. So the river now moves through Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, DRC, Tanzania, Kenya, no. South Sudan, Sudan, and Egypt. River Nile doesn't go to Rwanda, brother. The river Nile flows through. Um, these countries. No, it doesn't go to Rwanda. Sister, sister, sister Mary will tell you from Uganda to Rwanda. <laughs> they know it can go back the, to Rwanda. The, the source of the River Nile so is, is on the Rwanda-Burundi border. That I know for a fact. It may not flow through it, but that's one no. of its sources. Okay. Let's not dispute that, but <laughs> based on the facts that she knew, because Lake Victoria do not even reach Rwanda. Does it reach Sister Myra? I, 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 I can think it reached Rwanda. It doesn't Lake reach Rwanda. Victoria flows through Uganda, South Sudan, and Sudan. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, because it takes water from Victoria, and Victoria is shared between Tanzania, Uganda, and Kenya. Yeah. It picks it from a lake. It doesn't pick it from a river. River Nile depends on a lake. So the, the only lake in between here is Lake Victoria that borders Tanzania, Uganda, and Kenya. That's the biggest lake around. In fact, the inland lake, the biggest inland lake. 
from there you, now. Yeah, Brother Pigeon, are you are you aware of the Rwanda Burundi connection? They are one. I know they are one country. No, no, I'm talking and I'm talking about the River Nile. In terms of the no, River Nile. No, that one I don't know. Okay. All right. You can ha have a look at it later. Uh, there okay. is a video I saw where they showed us the exact spot where the water is coming out from under the ground. So, oh, okay, I'll check, I'll check on that. Yes. Anyway, we are all not uh, geographers here, so we can go back and check later. All right, please carry on. Thank yeah. you. So what I'm saying is that the first the first paragraph that talk about the unity of nature, I went back to the previous paragraph where it says just above the previous paragraph that thus Thales philosophy needed if it was to destroy the allegedly even san heaven sanctioned aristocratic society to assert the irrelevance of pathism in which he did by attempt to bring all explanation of nature within the ambit of nature itself. So here when he talks of the unity of nature and then he goes ahead to say the basic equality and justice. So I I'm finding the aspect that uh, this unity is also connected to what I'm reading in the previous uh, sentence in the past paragraph where uh, Thales talk about monist. Because pate, pate, Pantheon tend to believe that, uh, I think it tend to believe that there's two forces. There's uh, either the hierarchical thing where there's either the supreme. Uh, hold on, hold on. Bra Brother Pigeon, let, let yeah. me help you there. Uh, a pantheon is a group, it's a group of people. I think you are referring to pantheism, which is a different thing. That's a belief. You are referring to you are referring to pantheism. But pantheism but, is what can be equated to monist, or yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah. But I think are you? But I think you were referring to the word pantheon, no? No, I, I was confusing it by pantheon. I wanted to talk of pantheism, which pantheism, is yes, monism. Right. That's what I was trying to help you there. Yeah. So there's so pantheism, pantheon and then there's pantheism. Yeah. Please, please carry on. Yeah, so monist is what believes on unity of nature within, like oneness or equality, to my understanding of my thinking. So then uh, uh, that's what I'm trying to connect here, that the basis, if we view each other as from one source or one being, then actually we can do away with all other aspects, or we can bring, we can fully understand the need of equality or the basic principles of equality, that being that we come from the same, as from our class, from the same matter, then we actually are equal, irrespective of gender, color, or anything else. That's what I'm understanding here. Yeah. Then I'm also getting now the rule of thumb, which some of you have said, actually, uh, and how it was applied unfairly, which can still show evidence of injustice, as some have also said. Then uh, uh, that's what I'm getting in that paragraph. And uh, uh, yeah, so basically that's what I'm reading here. I cannot be able to connect this Last paragraph of egalitarian perception uh, necessary for a mercantile economy. I'm not. I'm still trying to work out what this means, but that's my thinking. Let me check. Let me go around and see if Brother Cook, are you able to share your thinking on that paragraph? If you're able to speak, or you spoke once and uh, you can speak later. <laughs> brother Coco? Yes, brother. Um, I'm still trying to figure this one out. As you know, egalitarianism is, is more about fairness. It's about um, you know, getting things right for everyone. But again, uh, if you take that into account and they apply it on the mercantile economy, it, it leads you to want to put in some rules in place for that to happen. Because with mercantile economy, we are talking about, um, you know, competition. We are talking about competition here. And for that competition to happen, it can only happen where rules are, are respected and rules are protected. And these rules are fair to everyone who is uh, involved. So I guess where they talk about Thales' egalitarian perceptions, then it's where we... He, he expected that fairness always has to come in, in, in place, no matter what, in order for the mercantile economy to thrive. And hence, this is where they sought general forms of rules 
to make sure that that uh, competition was protected or that fairness was upholded. Okay, and I guess here is where we we in the end lead to impartiality. Impartiality is where we there is no bias to anyone because when the rules are rules. Uh, and they are applied the same to everyone, regardless of class, uh, age, gender, or whatever, then there is no bias. We cannot say uh, we are going to, to give Brother Kwame this because he's a Brother Kwame. It's what he is uh, entitled to under the rules which we set as a, a community of people to guarantee that fairness and to ensure that the fairness reigns throughout uh, the whole community. And th this is how, if competition was fair, then everyone was entitled uh, to a, a fair share of fairness. But unfortunately, we know the real world is different. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Coco, for that. Did you have Mr. P? DJ Mr. P, are you able to share your so I know you came in for the rule of be, thumb. Be, before he comes in, then here in, in the last sentence where he says impartiality is the outward mark of uh, egalitarianism, then it goes on to emphasize what I said is if the rules are fair, then there is no bias, there is no partiality, there is no subjectivity in, in how you apply the rules then it shows the egalitarianism at work. It shows the fair system at work. Are the rules, are, are the rules fair in Africa? The back You know, it, it's talking about impartiality. Im, impartiality. So where we, we are not partial with how we apply the rules. And I don't think it's, it's talking about whether it's in Africa or Europe or anywhere no, else. No. Yeah. There's a question. Do we have impartiality in Africa? Or in Africa? Uh, forget about yes. it. Africa right right now is, is applying the rules which are which come from somewhere else. It's, it's the same in, in what you're doing in Kenya right now. Why are you protesting if the rules are fair? The rules are not fair because they, they are... Uh, applying on you the rules which are imported from uh, some Western master somewhere. Because Kenya has to borrow from somewhere else to survive. And unfortunately, what is borrowing <laughs> sometimes is it's not even sustainable or not even the same rate that the other Western countries which are borrowing from the same institution are paying. It's the same. So you cannot look at Africa in isolation in this case. Africa always has someone else telling them what to do. Only in communities deeper uh, in the villages where we live, and there there are no foreigners or foreign institutions telling us what to do, and we do things by ourselves. Can you say they are fair? fair there's fairness, but even in that case, there will be people who are taking advantage of the system, advantage of the rules, or advantage of others. But egalitarianism, of course, is a system where everybody is entitled to. Fairness. I hope that answers. Thank you for that. Yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> Let me throw it further. Let me first of all get to the other thinking as a sister. Uh, Aida, did you take the thinking of all the people available? Did they share their thinking? As the is maybe go. Um, uh, no, I am here. Um... DJ, Mr. P? Yeah, brother, I'm still actually processing this, you know. Yes, okay. because I'm not I'm not sure whether impartiality and in, in, egalitarianism are um, necessary go together because I always think egalitarianism means that it's people of um, uh, not a higher rank but you know they have maybe more money or whatever. Yes, that word. Okay. But I uh, see Brother Joseph is 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 is, is raring to go. So. Yeah, sorry, can I can I explain, Sister Sister Ida? Please, thank you. I think uh -huh. the, Sister yeah, Ida, please. the word that's a new word to me as well. Uh, sorry, can I finish? The words, the word you are referring to, Sister Ida, could be the word mm -hmm. elite. Elite. Uh, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. different 
from egalitarianism. Egalitarianism okay. uh, is, um, is, if you like, uh, a belief system, or if you like, a principle that says that um, all, all, all things, uh, if you apply equal. it to humans, that we are all equal. I so, to get. An egalitarian society is a society in which all the members are equal. Okay. And okay. An elitist society is a society that says that some people, maybe the one person. Brother, you froze. Oh, we lost you. Yeah, you froze. Yes, I, I, I think I'm, it was I'm something. Back. <laughs> I'm back. Okay, well well done. done. Welcome back. I'm back. So, elitist, an elitist society is a society that says that. There is a group, uh, however small or large, uh, called elites, and they could be the what we call the one percent. Um, so, 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 Dr. Jacqueline, uh, uh, but Batalora talks about the one percent in in Virginia, the British colony in Virginia, and the nations of the nation of Islam talk about the ten percent. Whatever the percent is, the elites are that small group, however large, that mm -hmm. basically are seen as better than everybody else. And, and I got it totally wrong. Thank you. Yeah, so Thank that, you. That, that's yeah. the difference between an elitist society and, and an egalitarian, a, an egalitarian mm -hmm. society. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that, brother. Brother uh, uh, Kwame. Uh, did you miss uh, No. Brother Joseph. Yeah, um, uh, I think Kwame is on the right path. I lead an organization, Friends of the Earth, that have long described itself as an egalitarian organization, among other things, non-governmental. Uh, uh, well, basically, it's, it's open to, to all who subscribe to the mission of the organization, but there's no discrimination on the basis of age, gender, anybody could be, you know, once the rules have been subscribed to and so that we used to have all kinds of people in my organization because we didn't show any class preference or any color preference or these kind of things. So it really is a liberating word. That's why I said impartiality. What stood out for me was the word impartiality and egalitarian in the passage. Because it, when it says also that that um, impartiality is the uh, outward something of egalitarian, it's like the it's a manifestation. Um, uh, in other words, I mean they go hand in hand. Uh, one is the spirit, and one is the practice. You might say. Okay. I, can, I, I think... can, I, can I add to what Brother uh, Joseph has said? So, Brother Joseph's um, contribution, you could say, is referring to uh, egalitarianism in terms of the rules of entry. So, if you want to enter this organization, uh, we don't discriminate on the basis of age, of sex, of color, and so on. So those are egalitarian rules of entry into an organization. Um, the egalitarianism that we are looking at here builds on what Brother Joseph has said and then goes further and says that not only is entry egalitarian, the rules of entry, not only are they non-discriminatory, but membership itself in terms of the benefits that you get are also non-discriminatory. In other words, some people in that, in that organization do not have preference over others just because they are more human than others. Does that make sense? And if there are any rules uh, in the organization that pertains to benefits, for example, if it says that for us to give you X amount of money, you should be in the organization for 10 years, just an example, that will apply to everyone once they get to 10 years. There's no discrimination. So, no, so nobody in that group, because of the pedigree of their family, or for some other reason, other than what the rule says, gets a benefit unless they have spent 10 years in that organization. So egalitarianism pertains to rules of entry and also uh, in terms of rules, uh, uh, rules of, if you like, the benefits of being a member. So if, if you are a Ghanaian or a Kenyan and you are a Kenyan woman and you have a child, 
that when that child enters the world in Kenya, that child has a right, um, just like any other child of any other woman in Kenya. That is, if Kenya was an international society, we know it's not. Same applies to Ghana, Gambia, and wherever. So some, some children, um, as we say, are born with silver spoons in their mouths. In other words, even in entering the world, they have have an advantage over other babies. Let me stop there. But you get the you get the, the, the point I'm making, don't you? Mm -hmm. And um, oh. you're talking about years, and I'm I'm really um, I I put my hand up to say that once upon a time I knew what that word was, but after 14 years of of the Tories and not having heard it within those years, particularly. It's disappeared out of my mind. So I thank you for reminding me what it really means. Okay. <laughs> so that's what I was going to say. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Can I just add something that you see? It's interesting you said that, Sister Ida, because that is the point of, the, of, of power. So when you are in office, you tend to set the agenda for the nation. And you get the nation to think how you want them to think. Uh -huh. And because conservatives are elitists in the sense that they believe that they believe in the fundamental hierarchy of society. At the top is the monarch, then around the monarch are other people, uh, immediate family, and then down, down, down. And uh, it used to be that we, the Africans, were the lowest of the low. It's not that explicit now. So if you have that kind of government in place for 14 years, as we did in the UK, it's easy to begin to think. Um, yeah. So yes, it's tighter. what you're saying, saying makes sense. And that is why we progressives have to fight to be in office. Because the only way our ideas can permeate the whole of society is if we are also in office. Otherwise, other people's ideas will permeate society perpetually. Thank you. Okay. Okay, before I go to Brother Joseph, uh, indeed, basically now what you mean, in, in an egalitarian society, there should not be classes, like the class struggle between the rich and the poor. Correct, correct. Now, yeah, uh, that... Well, not only yeah, just that, it's, it's just that it's open to all. Yeah, but also the oh, practice Brother of Joseph? it. Also Brother the Joseph? practice of it. Also, are you there? Are yes. you in me? Yes, also yes. The, practice. the theory could be something else and the practice. And I could tell you one of the things that have kept my organization, Friends of Yours, alive is we've gone through all kinds of difficulty is that notion, that idea, that particular theory. And because there are those who point out who in the city who wanted to set the rules for the people in the countryside. And there are those points out in the class and the color. There's all these things play up that vestige from colonialism and imperialism. But because we were very clear on what we were about, the organization remained open. That's why we work with up to now. If you see when we do things, who we, we do it with everybody who have the same aspiration like us, and nobody is dominated, is dominated the other. The rules are clear. Okay. Okay. All I right. think, yes, in nature of government, thank you. Before I come into Sister Myla, Myra and then Marlin and uh, Brother Sam, I think in like now what we are we're witnessing in Kenya. When the president got elected, then he was running a government by a small group of few people who had advisors and the rest, you see, leaving the majority out. So his policies and everything else were to serve the interests of the so-called conservative or a small group of liberals. But now when the people realize that uh, they have to own back their power, they have pushed the president to an extent today the president is of the whole executive. And that shows you that other people want to rule themselves by themselves. In fact, one of the meetings I was in today is where the people want to come up with their people's pledge. But they want leaders to sign to their pledge so that the leaders be accountable to them, not to their political parties or whoever appoints them, but directly to them as the people, because they realize that it is their power and their vote that make the leaders. So if the leaders are not accountable to them and answerable to them as equal, but rather to serve the small interests of a small group of people, that will become a problem to them, and that's what they are witnessing. But I wanted to bring something small before I come to there. Uh, uh, the aspect of power of classes, because there's something I read somewhere that was saying that uh, at, uh, in order to achieve a totally predictable economy, the low class elements of the society must be brought under total control. 
which means they must be housebroken, trained and assigned a yoke of a long-term social duties from early age before they have an opportunity to, get, to question the property of the matter. In order to achieve such, they're now forced to. So there's a preoccupation of our classes in the capitalist life, whereby some group of people are either being subjected to a law class and being forced to give an education that is somewhat lowly so that they cannot understand the things to come and question why should there be no fairness within a society. So we are trained from early age to appear like you belong to the law class. You just even the kid knows that okay, we are the middle class. We are not the rich people. We are the poor people. We got this poor, poor sanitation, this poor infrastructure, poor hospitals, or anything else. And the rich class, as they give that kids, uh, give that to their kids, the kids have that in, in, in superiority complex. They know that okay, we are born from the this class. We dominate these people. So I think that has been part of also what affects the society. But as a brain sister Myra, as a Malin. I also want to know this last aspect, which says can that... I, can, I, can I come in there? Samara, if it's okay. Uh, Brother Pigeon, just so we go to the yes. heart of the matter in terms of the class issue. Uh, so in the capitalist class, in the, sorry, in the, in the capitalist society, there are two fundamental classes. Yeah? So they are called the property-owning class who own all the property and then the non-property-owning class who, are, who only own what we call their labor power, in other words, the workers. So those are the two fundamental classes, the property owners and those who own, only own their body and their labor power. Now, here is, a, here is the thing. The capitalism, and this is why it's so fundamentally unfair, capitalism believes that in a capitalist society, the capitalists must be given preference over the other class called labor and those who are not laborers, those who are not labor, like uh, uh, the old people who cease to be workers, uh, children who are not yet in the labor force. So children who are not yet in the labor force and those who are out, out of, out of the, the labor force uh, in a way, they are, their situation may even be worse. But like, if you just concentrate on the, the capitalists and labor, the unfairness is that when the business makes a profit, the capitalists must be given a large share, the largest share. Yeah. So if you think of lions uh, who have killed uh, a buffalo, yeah, the capitalist is like the male lion, if you like, the alpha male, if you like. And that capitalist is like the alpha male. And that alpha male, he may not be there when the buffalo is being killed. You know, he can just be uh, just there whilst all the other um, lions do all the work, especially, especially the female lions. Uh, the lionesses do all the work and catch the prey. Then the, then the lion comes in, and when the lion arrives, everybody must give way because the lion has arrived. And then they, they make way, and then he then, the idea is he has a lion's share. That is the nature of the capitalist class. The lion here is a capitalist class. And what they are saying is that they have, there is a thing, they, they said they have a right. They have a right to the lion's share of profits. They have a lion's share to G. NP, gross national product. They have a lion's share of GDP. They have a lion's share of everything because they claim that they are the investors. They are those who, if you like, as money, do all the thinking. All you do is go home and sleep and then you come to work. You, you don't take part in the risks of the business and so on. They do all the work. And that is the heart of the issue when it comes to capitalism, that somehow a group of people in society Never mind how they got that, that wealth. That's a, a different matter. Yeah? That's a different issue. But just by virtue of how of the by virtue of they having that, you know, somehow belong to that class, somehow they have a right to the largest part, largest part of the wealth. And they can continue to oppress and suppress all the others and so on and so forth. And so so I thought I should make that clear. Thank you. Thank you. So in that context, the rule of thumb might appear to be a capitalist rule 
than the general rule being discussed here. <laughs> yes, and, <laughs> and, and you could add, Mother Pigeon, you could add yeah. that that rule of thumb that says that the capitalist class must have the lion share of everything is what the Kenyan people have recently rebelled against. Correct. Yeah. Because the ruling elites in Kenya are part of the 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 global capitalist class. You know, they are not that powerful, but they are an appendage. They are like the tail of that class, the imperialist class. Yeah. Yes. The yes. corporations, the multinationals that control Africa. I don't know. I mean, yes. that, that was the point of Nkrumah's book, New Colonialism, the last stage of imperialism, that Africa is controlled by multinationals. Yeah. You know, and we, we can go, we, we can we can go into that. But I just wanted to add that these class they make deals and so on with our brothers and sisters and uncles and aunties, however you want to call them, who are now part of the ruling elite. And what they do is they oppress us on their behalf. And that is that rule of thumb is what the people of the youth of Kenya said enough is enough. They don't want that. Thank you, thank you. Because you mentioned something very important. Just yesterday, after the people pressure the president that they don't want dialogue, the president reached out to the opposition leader who he has now endorsed to be the AU chairperson, and the opposition leader called for a press briefing together with the president. The opposition leader was calling the nation to accept a dialogue. And the people shared his contact. The citizens told him to stay off and leave us alone. We don't want him to protect his class because we have realized they're brothers on the same class and we want to act on our own. And that's what has pressure, pressured the president today to dissolve his executive. So people realizing that these are the same class who want to protect their interests by the so petty called dialogues to discuss. Precisely. You see, um, what we are also discussing is the question, where is the decision-making table for Kenya? Where is that table? Or <laughs> even for the Sahel states. Yeah, where is that table? And the, the problem, and I think the Kenyan youth are trying to get at it, that table is not even in Kenya. It's in US. <laughs> yeah, or, or, in, or in Europe, yeah. Let me get so let me get to Sister Mary. Oh, Sister Grace, you're here. Well, Welcome. Yes. Is it then right to assume that these leaders, you know, when we keep saying, why do they keep going back? Why do they keep going back? They want to be in this class, in this elite group, Correct. rub shoulders with them, so make money through whatever they're stealing from wherever to then uh fit what what's this what's the word to fit in correct correct uh, you see the you. way the way the way ruto has been exposed as to his wealth his class his whatever and he's now got access to go to these people and he keeps accepting everything just to fit in okay thank you sister grace of course let's look at that as well because there's also maybe the personal benefit they get by fitting in. And those kinds mm. of incentives of money being given to send a mission to Haiti, being an, a NATO ally, joining mm. whatever and the rest, which is personal and not to the country. But we'll discuss that. So basically what we are coming out here is that we as the progressive should and will always fight for egalitarian society where the welfare of the people is the supreme for all, not for a class of people using the rule of thumb. But let me get to Sister Marlin. She hasn't spoken anything, and Brother Sam. I'll allow the other members to come in and contribute in regards to this text. Uh, Sister Marlin, and then Brother Sam. Mm, okay, what I will say to a couple of things I've been listening to is that... Oh, she's just calling. Hold on. <laughs> what I would say to a couple of things I've been listening to is that I listened to a video yesterday and it threw another spin on it. It said um, it shouldn't be Ruta the people should be after. It should be the multinational companies because they're the one that's putting the pressure on Ruta to um, carry out what he's doing. And that made me have a think, you know, a 
something to think about. But at the same time, I will put another spin on it. Ruta is the one that is going along with the multinational companies that is putting the pressure on him. And he's looking after himself and the elite and all that needs to stop in Africa. And I hope I live to see that happen one day because uh, the age I am now and what I grew up seeing was Africa always being oppressed, looked down on, being a poverty-stricken country, lies being told, people believe in it, and it worked extremely well. And mm -hmm. now, somehow, it's like, it, it is... Uh, this the cover is coming off and people are knowing the truth and thinking differently. I was even on a bus today and someone was saying that Britain is overcrowded. So I told her, well, if they didn't interfere in so many countries mm -hmm. and support all the wars that does go on throughout the world, like exactly. they're the biggest arm dealers, or the biggest, exactly. Exactly. you know, whatever. A lot of people wouldn't come here. A lot of people come here for refuge because these countries are in their country, um, a part of, you know, being creating a lot of the problem while they're taking the mineral. And exactly what I said, what they tell the world work, she said to me, I really thought they were there helping. I said, we're told that <laughs> it is for their benefit. No one is helping anyone because what has Europe got? Europe has no minerals. So they need it from all these countries that they support where the fightings are all going on. So if more people start realizing it, not listening to the lies, knowing what is the truth and we all wake up um we will get more of a a better shift and these elites in so-called africa and the caribbean they'll have to come down a peg or two because like kwame said a while back um britain even though they've got the their elite they put things in place so that the mass go to bed eating and have a roof over their head. Where in Africa, the mass struggle to eat and struggle to have a home because most of their homes are shacks and not what you would call homes. And that is the mass. That is not a small majority so they've worked things out very cleverly and the table has to chain turn at some point and that's my little say thank you thank you thank you let me get to i know the answer up but let me get first of all to brother sam before i allow other people to come in and contribute uh brother sam then i'll go to sister grace because they have been given them space to share their thinking brother sam Thank you, Brother Pidgey, and uh, everybody on the platform. It, it's been a while. I've not been part of the, the group, and I might not be intelligently following okay. the discussions now. But, uh, did you find but it easy? Brother Sam, did you find Sorry? it easy to join? Today? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Can, can I just, just for, for my... Uh, Getting on to, on to uh, what the discussion is, just ask this question. In terms of this egalitarian society, where do we see this? Or, or, or if I simply, simply say, do we see this as some, something towards communism or synonymous to communism and is this practically possible where we have a society where everybody is equal thank you 
Thank you. That's a very good question. Sister Grace, I'll come to you if you'd like to answer or share your thinking well and good, then we'll allow other members also to either uh, try brother, to answer uh, Brother Sam. Sorry, Brother Pigeon, can I come in? Um, yes. Can I remind us all that we are commenting on the paragraph we've read? I know we are commenting on other things related to um, the implication of what we are reading, but we need to understand the paragraph in front of us. And the last time I heard, people were struggling with understanding the paragraph. So it appears we are we are running away from the paragraph instead of understanding it. And we only have about under 30 minutes left. Okay. We need to understand the paragraph in front of us, and then we can then apply it to Africa. Yeah, thank I know you. We thank you for that guidance. Back, but we need to return to the paragraph. Thank you. Thank you for the guidance. Sister Grace? Sister Grace? I think it's me. I came in as Grace. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Right, right. No, the, my, my contribution was that because that um, they like it. Our leaders like it to be taking pictures with them. I see mine every time he goes there, takes loads and loads of pictures and posts them on Facebook, not explaining what they were discussing or what, what they came back with or what they were doing for us out there. Um, okay. It's just that I am now part of this club. I am now, you know, talking to these people. I now have access to Biden or or Putin and things like that. Um, so to be to be to be to have more access, they go and get these arrangements signed and signed and signed and signed, and uh, okay. come back and we we all get into trouble. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, back to what Brother Kwame is saying, actually, or whether we've exhausted this paragraph in the totality, because there are two aspects I'm seeing here: the aspect of rules, which is the rule of thumb and the general rule, and the aspect of basic equality and justice. And uh, it's something that uh, really is coming out of here. And uh, maybe, uh, Brother Kwame, uh, is there anything uh, you can you share with us you're thinking further? Or maybe, because you're only defining to us some definition. I, you have not shared your thinking. It's fine. Can I, can I explain? So uh, are we all familiar with um, the story about King Darius? Um, King Darius called uh, um, together some Greeks who were present and asked them how much money they would wish to be paid so they can devour the corpses of their fathers. Yeah? And they replied that no amount of money will suffice for that. In other words, under no circumstances will they devour the corpses of their fathers. Then Darius called some Indians, called the, 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 the Kalantians. And the Kalantians, they eat their parents, these group of Indians. They eat their parents. Right. And, and Darius also asked them, in the presence of the, of the Greeks, yeah, who were able to follow what was being said yeah, by means of an interpreter. And Darius asked the Kalantians, so how much money would it take you uh, to buy your consent so that we, your dead parents are cremated. So instead of eating your dead parents, they will be cremated. And they in turn cried out in horror and told Darius yeah, that even his words were a desecration of silence. <laughs> that there's no way, there's no amount of money also that uh, Will, will, will get them to, 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 to burn their parents when they die rather than eating them. I don't know that we're all familiar with this story. Yeah? So it no. goes to the heart of... Never the heard life. of it. I suppose I've heard of it. Right. Okay. So this story goes to the heart of what we are discussing here as a rule of thumb. So for the Greeks, yeah, the rule of thumb was that you don't eat your dead parents. Yeah? That's their rule of thumb. When your parents die, you don't eat them. Okay? You cremate them, if you like. The rule of thumb of the Kalantians is when your parents die, it's such a horrible thing to eat, to, to, to bend them, it's better to eat them. 
because you came out of them and when they die, they go into you and life continues. This is their thinking. So what is this telling us? What, what, what is, is this telling us? It's telling us that the rules of thumb come from practical life. That is the source of the rule of thumb. All the examples we gave, I gave, Brother DJP gave, Sister, Malin, Sister Myra gave, all those rules are from practical experience. Some of the rules of thumb, people have even lost their origin. So for example, a woman, um, when, when, when cooking, will, will, will cut, will cut the meat into a round shape, yeah? Cut into a round shape. And anytime she's going to cook meat, she'll cut the meat round along so the meat is round in the pot. And then one day, that was her rule of thumb. Then one day, somebody asked her, why um, do you always cut the meat round before you put it in the pot? And her response was that, that is what my mother always did. And the reason the mother always did that was because the mother's pot for cooking meat was very small. That's why she cut the, the, the meat so it can fit into the pot. So that rule of thumb of cutting around the meat so it is round came from a practical experience. I hope you are getting what, what I'm getting at. The rules of thumb are based on practical experience, practical life. The problem is that when you move from one culture to another, the experiences are different. So when you live in a hot climate where you are melaninated, yeah, when you move from there to a different climate where you don't have sunshine, where every day is not summer, culture will, will be different. So you will find that the rule of thumb that you use in this culture, in this society, does not apply in the other culture. And that is what we are reading. So the Egyptian uh, guys who, who, if you like, uh, reshare the land among the farmers were using a particular method, knotted pieces of cord. Right now, if you go to a different society, they may also have knotted pieces of, of cord. But then, guess what? <laughs> the knotted pieces of cloth that they use in Egypt may be different from what they use around Lake Victoria and may be different from what they use around River of Volta in Ghana and so on. So, you find that the knotted pieces of cord will be different. It, it turns out that. When you are measuring things, every society, it turns out, has its own way of measuring things. So what you call a yard in another culture is something different. What you called uh, a feet in another culture is different. And that is why the world met yeah, and agreed to have one system called a metric system. And all of us use that system. And the metric system you know, 10, milli 10 millimeters, make one centimeter, 10 centimeters, you know, make, make one decimeter. Ten now that measurement is meant to be that which is applicable on the global level. So even the British who have their own imperial system had to change from that, you know, feet and yard to the metric system. That's why in mathematics, we don't teach feet and yard anymore. We always teach the metric system. If you go to Japan, they treat the metric system. If you go to, to, to France, they treat the metric system. If you go to Ghana, they treat the metric okay. system. In other words, we now have what we call a general rule. Yeah? And that general rule is that we all use a metric system. I hope I am I'm making sense. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so okay. what we are reading is, is drawing our attention okay. that... Thales was part of a society in which there was a hierarchy. Yeah? And the hierarchy was based on planting the land, agriculture. Yeah? And you had to pray to, 
to God if there was no rain. And so out of society arose a group that said that they had access to God and that if you want to pretend to God or talk to God, you had to go through them. And they became the, the priests. And then at some point, they even began to oppress society. As society evolved, the source of wealth moved from the land to what we call mercantilism, which basically is buying and selling. And so ships were built and people went, uh, ships went out, they went to trade, trade, they came back and they brought a lot of goodies, a lot of wealth. And then this group of people, the mercantile class, then also became uh, very wealthy and they displaced the the, if you like, the agriculturist or the agricultural class. What it meant, therefore, was that there was a need for a new rule because the rule that is based on the fact that only priests can approach God, that was now redundant. So they had to look for a new rule. And so what Thales did, and this is what we have been told in what we have read in the earlier, uh, earlier paragraph, is that his rule was based on the idea that we must measure everything using water. So water became the basis for the general rule. As you have all noticed, some of you have noticed anyway, is that that itself is problematic because if water is a basis for equality, then some people will be more equal than others. How about the old woman who, can, who cannot uh, afford to build a ship and who cannot go and, and trade? How about the child who, you know, whose, whose, whose mother is physically challenged and who cannot go on the sea? So in other words, even water as a basis for the general rule was problematic. But the point is that at least Thales was, if you like, groping in the dark for some kind of general rule that the metric system is today for all of us. Is that clear so far? Yeah. Yes. So, so, uh, so what we are reading is telling us that what uh, our philosophy is telling us is that our rule, the new rule that we are going to use hmm, to measure society is not going to be rooted in any rule of thumb. Because what the English do is different from what the Ghanaians do or what the G Gambians do or what the Libyans do. Therefore, the rule that is being proposed here is a rule that we all come from the same matter. Now, if we all come from the same matter, that is, you are at least 60% water, all of us, however, wherever you are in society, whether you are the elite or not, you are also subject to the same matter. If we use that rule, that we all come from the same matter, that means we all have to drink water. We all have to eat food. We all have to have to excrete. We all have to, we all have children. All of our children must go to school if that is what we decide. We have to go to a market where we all buy goods. And when we go to that market, everybody must be able to buy what they need and so on and so forth. So if we base the rule on the fact that we all come from the same matter, then it becomes clearer why society uh, should be based on the egalitarian principle that is rooted in matter. Because now you cannot claim that you need five, five bedrooms in your house. How is it that you have five bedroom house when we know that every human being can only sleep on one bed? How are you going to justify having a mansion when some other human being sleeps in the hut. What is your justification? So we begin to see that if we, if we move away from the rule of thumb and then we use scientific principles, in this case, the scientific principle of the fact that all of us, all human beings, the entire human race, and a human race has no subspecies. There's only one human race. They all come from one woman, the black woman, whatever they tell you. All of us come from the same woman. Black woman is the mother of 
all living things human. And then from Africa, they moved away and they traveled from out the continent. Yeah. All those, wherever they are on this globe, on this planet, they all started from Africa. So once we understand that, then it is clear that it cannot be that if you live in America, somehow you have more right to life than someone in my village called Atitekpo or Aklamado or, or my town, my father's town called, called Kipando or Pando. The fact that you live in Wisconsin doesn't mean that you have more right than me living in Nairobi. No, we're all human beings and we will have the same rights. We should have the same privileges, equality. And that is what this paragraph is drawing our attention. To summarize, the need for us to understand the rules of thumb can lead to partiality. Therefore, we need general rules that are applies to all of us, not some of us. Thank you. Thank you very much. I must add it to that part and cut it out and send it out all over clearly. Because if our leaders could understand what you're saying, then this aspect of <laughs> this aspect of so many of us are used to it, that you go somewhere, you find people lining up because you came with a vehicle or some something sort in a village, you have to pass fast so that you'll be serving them. You they will can wait. They can wait. It's really, it's really something that is affecting us. I really appreciate, Brother Kwame, how you brought it, because I wasn't seeing it in that direction, but you've really helped me a bit to try and understand this. Uh, uh, we have uh, around 10 minutes to go. Members who want maybe to come in, in respect to also what Brother Kwame has shared, or also to share more of their thinking as well. Uh, Brother Joseph, and then Brother Koko. Um, some of what Brother Kwame said, I was going to uh, touch on it. The thing about it is about when we talk about egalitarianism, is that it's based on universal universality. Universality. It also is not speculative. It is predictable, unlike what is happening now or happened before. And also, it is something that is at the same time an aspiration that is ever challenging people to be better, not over one another, but better than them, better, better version of who you are now, not based on prescription. If you want to see some uh, sign, some evidence of impartiality, look at what happened in the UN. You have states that are more, uh, more, uh, more guided, like in the Security Council, they have veto rights and that kind of thing. And even when they appoint them, when they're the UN was set up. Um, it was considered that if in the general the general assembly the a majority vote. Now that doesn't even work these days. So we have to see that those rules that apply internationally are not rule are not based on universality as they've been claimed, but based on rule of thumb, the change of rule. You see what happened when Iraq was invaded. I mean, certain countries that decide they are going, not notwithstanding the fact that it was never proved that that uh, Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. Um, you know, earlier on I wanted to raise the issue that uh, part of the problem we face as a world is that certain certain things have been left out, and Brother Kwame might know more about that than than me. Because based, for instance, in mathematics and in and in some to some extent religion, there's something called the X factor. And X factor, if you don't know, you leave it out. When in doubt, leave it out. So because there's a gap. And the X factor for us is that we are ignorant of a lot of things that we should. And, and I want to use the opportunity that while we focus on Kenya. And also we be so concerned that what is happening in Kenya is a reaction to what is happening. We need to get, uh, like so that it, it is sustained, whatever change happening is sustained. We should also look at South Africa, and I'm glad that Brother Sam is there. There's a lot of things happening in South Africa. South Africa is being dismantled just at this very moment in very subtle way. Yeah. I want I want yeah. people to pay attention to South Africa. Yeah. It is. 
there's a move to to dislodge Man Ma Malema. And when you look at South Africa, Malema has been the most pan-Africanist, you could say, in terms of political people there. He inspires and he, he triggers certain things, but they are going to, they're doing everything. They're playing all kinds of cards in South Africa. And we have to pay attention to South Africa because South Africa, the, the, the future of our people is tied up with the future of South Africa. And of course, with Kenya and Ghana and all the other places, Congo and so on. So we should not leave out South Africa in the frame. I mean, in the in the mix. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Justin. Brother Coco? Wow. Uh, where do I start after such great uh, stalwarts of Pan-Africanism? Uh, Brother Kwame and then Brother Joseph. It, it's hard to follow what they are saying. <clears throat> but I'll try. Um, I'm trying to refer back to the questions that were asked by Dademotau. Dademotau comes from uh, Ubuntu. He understands what Ubuntu is. And Ubuntu is egalitarian in nature. I am because we are. And in Ubuntu as well, we have Morena, Kimorena, Kabahatu, which means... The chief is a chief only by the grace of his people. You cannot be a leader unless we as a people will put you up there. But unfortunately, what democracy has done, it has given people who campaign to be there with the rich on our behalf. They are dining and drinking and socializing with the rich on our behalf as if we cannot do it ourselves that is a problem looking back at the paragraph the paragraph was all about uh, arbitrariness in the beginning but what pales was trying to do was to move away from that arbitrariness to introduce laws to introduce formality of doing things what we are seeing in the modern society in which we live now we have a, a daylight robbery. By mm -hmm. daylight robbery, I mean we have democracy, which we have been we have um, inherited from our Western colonizers, and that system allows people to campaign. And when they campaign, anyone can be bought for money to represent different interests for what we, as the electorate, wanted in the first place. So that is what is encapsulated in Silent Coup by Matt Kennard and Claire Provost. It's not just that there are many, many other things which shows that the system is, is rotten. The system is broken. It's broken in South Africa, it's broken in Kenya, it's broken everywhere. But we as the people are the principals. Let's not forget that. I think Brother Kwame referred to that in the beginning and said, the capitalists, those with the money, they think they're entitled. They are the same people as the elites. But that doesn't mean they are more entitled than everyone else. Everyone is entitled. All of us are equally entitled. Motu, I am because we all are. Thank you. I hope I've answered your question, Dr. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Brother Coco, for that. You, are... yes, you did. You did. Thanks. Yeah, we are a minute or two to end up uh, to finish our meeting today, around two minutes to go. Uh, Brother Kwame, do you have anything to say as we close? Yes, can I ask you, Mr. P, to respond to my question in the chat, please? Thank you. You have time for that. I'm still yes, sorry. Out, no, 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 you can do that privately. You, you continue. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. No, I think you need a session privately to do this, because eh? uh, we have one minute to go, Brother Kwame. I think we are, we are past our class time, almost. So maybe you may not have time to respond to this, but it's very important to discuss this because actually, Sorry to what discuss. is bringing, no in the next session, not here. Yes. Whatever is bringing on the aspect of people being compromised and not compromised has come out severally in any struggle we make. So it's very important we have a proper session sometimes in future to discuss this because we are looking on how we can get out of the process or the program where we are, and uh, we need to work out how or what are the principles we look at. To find a solution as a way forward. That's not part of this. 
but you need to have maybe some time to discuss it. Yeah, it's not. And and I think uh, I'm responding to what you did, Mr. People, to the chat because remember, this chat is going out. Our class goes out to the world. So if we are saying things in the chat, we must be mindful and we must provide evidence. We just say that Malema is compromised without giving any evidence. It's not. I, I was about to give some evidence, but um, yeah. I didn't uh, realize that the chat goes out to. It uh... goes out. And there is no evidence that Malema has been compromised. If you have, you need to share it rather than just saying he's been compromised. Yeah, well, I, don't, I, I you know. don't know of any evidence. Um, but if you do, please well, share it. But like I said, that is in the no. chat. So it's fine. Yes. But as we are having the class, we're also chatting and providing scientific evidence. That's okay. I'm just reminding us that the chat goes out as well. So we have to be scientific in our chats as well. That's what I'm trying to say. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We have come to the of the class. Unless the terms in UK exchange <laughs> tells me that we are we are 11 02 p.m. in Kenya, which is relevant exactly. So thank you very much for your attendance today. I think there was a lot we could learn in only this small paragraph. And there's a lot we've taken almost two hours trying to understand and even apply this. That shows you the real depth and the need of this book. Because there's a lot of content here that we are trying to learn. Some of us are getting new things. We are getting to learn new things we didn't know. And even when you share our application, our eyes open wider. And people are able now to share and see the reality. And that's the beauty of consciousness. It actually gives information that some people said that was written long ago. No, it was not long ago. It's actually relevant today. And if you master it properly, it's the way we can find ourselves out of the situation we are in today. So thank you very much for your attendance today. And we'll be meeting on Saturday where Sister Grace Chisola will be sharing with us the happenings in my world. Great, thank you. Yeah, but, nice. Brother Pigeon, what, yes. what I would say before we go is that as we are the only uh, global group holding consensus in classes, there's nothing stopping us from releasing a new version of the book. Um, as, as an authority, we can release a new version. So if people are saying it was published many years ago, if we release a new version, of course, we'll ask the permission of his family. Publishing. Then that solves that problem. <laughs> no, that how, how can we re release a new version? Well, we can't discuss that now, but I'm just saying that that is permission a possible route. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm trying okay. to say at this point. Yeah, thank good you. Idea, good idea, Brother Kwame. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. I will, but as I said, I will say more when we, when we get there, yeah? We'll say more about that, yeah.